Well, good evening, all. I wrap scene, and here we are with your stock spider ETF market wrap up. And this is for Wednesday, the 29th of May, 2024. All right, you have one more full day to enjoy my sale. That is tomorrow. I, I know on Friday the sale ends. I don't know what time the computer's shutting it off. I'll try to find that out, but I don't know yet. All right, 40% off any of the courses. That's the full charting course and or any, I'll take all three, the Enhanced Bollinger Band, and of course, the Outside Day course, and one-year research purchase. Now, if you go for the one year, you go, uh, first of all, you go on our website at irapstein.com, or you can move your cursor to the top up here, there'll be an icon. When you get there and you go to research, it defaults by how we've set it up to daily. You'll see a button, it says yearly, just click the button, it'll move to yearly, and you'll see all the 40% off signs on that. That's how that works. After tomorrow, that's it for you. All right, let's take a look also at what we have coming up in the market. Tomorrow, we're gonna see first thing at 7.30, the uh, second look at the first quarter GDP. They're looking for it to shrink from the, uh, from the gold that it had of 1.6% to 1.2, but they're looking for the chain weighted price index to be about unchanged. Jobless claims, they're saying maybe 3,000 gain. National Association of Realtors pending home sales. Well, this is the season. Are we gonna see any numbers there that make sense? Because we know that mortgages have gone back up and that's holding the people back. EIA natural gas storage comes out tomorrow at 9.30. The petroleum stocks come out at 10 o'clock. And we just had today in the afternoon, the API numbers, and this is what they look like uh, overall a decline. So. In the markets, what we saw today was interesting because most markets were down. Just look behind me. It's pretty much a sea of red. NVIDIA to the upside, Netflix to the upside. Uh, as I step back here, United Airlines, American Airlines got annihilated today. Their, their programs just aren't working well. They moved away from corporate clients and it's hurting them. Uber was up a nice little amount today and you're hard pressed to find anything that's really up after that lift, I guess, a little bit, and that's about it. Now, I can tell you that in my morning subscriber video yesterday, I started really lightening up on long positions, expecting a pullback here. I still have in the back of my mind, I know it's nuts, the sell may go away. Uh, I've watched that over the years. It doesn't always work, that's number one, but May's not over and you could get that. Number two, I looked at the chart action and I saw the markets getting to areas, they, they just look stressed and pulled to the upside. To keep the markets just vertically going, you gotta feed the bull, and without that, you could run into some trouble. That trouble can come in a moderation in GDP, but at least they're looking for a lower number. But the PCE could be a, a market that's got you surprised. And that's where I'll leave it at this point, because after that, we'll get back in at the first of the month to jobs reports, CPIs, PPIs, and the like. You know that. Earnings all day. Salesforce got smashed. I was watching the argument between Benoff, who is the CEO, and Kramer today at the end of the day. And uh, it's all about, look at our cash flow. It's bigger than Coca-Cola's. Look what we're making. That's what we're focused on. And the market took it down because the growth isn't there. And that's what the market wants to see. So the arguments go forward. Those that are seeing their stock values go up, are in the AI, uh, Salesforce uses supposedly AI, that's what they say, but they're not an AI developer, I think, you don't count that, but the, the, the cloud business most certainly is, and those have done well, and those that are coming out, but not everything's great. You saw a failure today uh, with Anglo-American, they're not gonna be taken over. So they said, uh-uh, we don't like the 49 billion. We don't like the risk actually that you want us to take by splitting the company up and there's too much risk on the table for us. And we don't know what will happen if we sell the company and just don't walk away from our shareholders. We don't want the liability. That's what I really think took place. We're watching mergers, we're watching takeovers in the energy market, because as much as everybody wanted to think that we're through with crude oil and that's the end of it, folks, you're not through with crude oil. 
you've certainly got a minimum four to five years of uh, that you're going to be dealing with it. Electric vehicles will come on in a much bigger way. They have to get the prices down to twenty to twenty five thousand for entry cars, and I predict that they will. It's that simple. I've just heard, I was reading today that Stellantis is coming out with a electric Jeep that's going to be in that range. Now, if they can, they'll get a market for it. 60000 70000 for a Jeep is a heck of a lot of money. I used to have a Jeep, so I know. And uh, it was just a fun car. Anyone that's had one, a smile comes over your face. Forget the ride. You're going to bump around and all that. But you don't buy it for luxury. You buy it for a beach car or whatever you had. And I, I kept mine in Florida and loved it. All right. Would I get another one, by the way? For sure. Especially electric. That, that's interesting to me. All right. So in looking at the market, why don't we go to the charts and see what we've got? First off, I picked a good one for you, HIMS, hims and hers. With everything else down, this stock was up 2.5% today. I'm happy with that. Now, you do have the pattern of higher lows, higher highs. Warning sign, warning sign, okay? You're at the Bollinger Top. If you were sitting next to me, I'd be telling you, you got to take some money off the table. That doesn't mean you can't hold it right here, but it's time to do that. You can see where you're at with all the moving averages. And when you get over to the Bollinger Bands, you're not embedded. That's so darn important. And you're at the Bollinger Band. So for my money, ring some of the bell if you happen to get into that and take something off the table and you could sit, you know. If all the weight drugs are going crazy, I can tell you, people will look at the outlier ones and say, I'll give that a try. My gosh, I don't have to spend uh, $900, 969 a month to take some of these. I can try this for, let's say, $100 a month. I'm, I'm making this up, but that's about where they're going to try to come in. Whoa, whoa. People will try it. And if they like it, it's like, uh, you know, you see the Viagra on TV. The, the, instead of paying as they show you, the Walgreens and the CVS bills, $400. You can get it for eight cents a pill or something. Um, WMT, all right, it's still doing well. It's got the embedded reading. If it loses that, back off. But as I said, this is the premier marketeer of brick stores, absolutely. In Tesla, it's a rough one to want to trade right here. And others see that. Look at how long you've hung at this 18-day average. Which way is the vote going to go for Elon Musk? And does he then say, well, you know, if I can't get paid, I don't have to spend that much attention to this. As it is, he has so much time, has so many companies. I don't know how he pays attention to anything, but he seems to get it done. He's the brightest guy of certainly my lifetime. And he gets this, these things done and he does it well and he does it on a scale that nobody else seems to be able to get them done. But don't pay him. And I think you're going to piss him off. And I think he deserves what the contract called for. And I know you all say, well, that, look at the billions. Look at what he's made people. Higher high, lower and low. And you can see how the market is sitting here right over there. So this is Freeport. Now, this is where some traders at this 18-day average are going to start to build positions. I wouldn't be surprised if they start here and build them all the way down to under $50, all right? Maybe even as far down here. So they might have a goal of an $8 range. And it wouldn't surprise me. There's going to be what I call the value traders that look at this market and say, the heck with that chart stuff. There's going to be shortages. These companies are the ones that have the product. I'm already seeing that it's hard to get deals done. I want to own the miners that have this. And that's what you're going to get from that. And I, I said that in my special report, if you'll remember, on copper. I haven't changed my opinion, and I am friendly. All right. Uh, gasoline failed right at the 18-day average again. So this is a pattern that we have had in place now, frankly, since the beginning of the month, and it's held up all this time. These averages, which you can see the 100 and the 200, have proven to be between that and the 18, a heck of a resistance pattern. You've got to do a lot to get over them. You've got to literally close over 67.48 to tell me that the market's uh, going to now be able to clear itself and start moving to the upside. And I don't see that right here. 
very oversold in XLF and coming to the Bollinger Band. It's called ka -ching. Take some money off the table is what I would be teaching. XLI, taking money off the table. I don't care where it goes. You can go to the 100-day average. Take some money off the table. It was interesting that it fell today because if you looked at the Richmond Fed numbers, they were powerful. Did you look at the Beige Book today? Not as terrible as it could have been. Yet the market's getting weighted down with everything. But how long do you stay under a Bollinger Band? What is this chart's history of doing that? It's not big. You don't fight that. I know you want to fight it. I don't want you to fight it. So between here and there, I'm looking for some support. That does not mean you're going long. It's one thing to cover shorts, very different thing to go long. RSPD, you're down to the lower Bollinger Band. Again, this is where I think the pros are going to start covering shorts. Could it go lower? Absolutely. Big difference between covering shorts if you're in the market because the trend is down. XHB, same thing. And you know, I think these home builders are smart guys, but they're fighting now a wave where we might see interest rates jump again. We're back up here to the four sixes in the 10 year, 2% in the five year, that's hard to beat. And that's pressuring these markets. We're already gonna be in June. You know, you, the home builders have a season that they go through where people come in and buy, and that's it. Now, if you've got a spec home ready to go, you're probably gonna do well in this market still. Uh, XLE and the energy, you don't think it fell apart? You're riding the Bollinger Band, you're bumping and hitting it. So between there and these two numbers are where the next support level comes in. It is, in my opinion, not a place that new short sales are likely to take place. In the gold market, now I get interested. If the market can get over 218.50, I start going, hmm, there was your pullback. Market can't stay under the 18-day average. If it can't, I don't care. Let it slip away. This is what I was looking for to happen, and this is the battleground. So now I just sit back, comfortably go back, and I go, hmm, I've got X dollars ready. I want to deploy. Give me the chart pattern. Silver stronger than gold has just stayed that way. It is very overbought. It's not acting like it can make it to the next Bollinger Band at this point. And I think the pros started taking some profits over here, actually, when you lost the embedded reading and didn't get back to this number. Interesting. Now, if you take out 29.56, that means it was a failure when you lost the embedded reading to get there. That 18-day average is still in play until that happens. Now we get to the baby that I'm talking about, copper. I expected, and I, you're part of that because if you saw the copper report, for this to pull back to the 18-day average, for Freeport to pull back, for the futures to pull back. I'm getting everything I wanted. So these are the areas that I'm interested in. Now, I think that it's between here and around the 43 level that the traders are gonna build positions in the copper. We'll see if I'm right or wrong. My work doesn't say to do that. My work certainly gets friendly if you get over 5012. But to do that, you can't take out 4751. So you, if you get there, I'm gonna be all over this market. So I wait and see what it's going to do. TLT, going into the PCE and the like, coming down rather hard at this point in time. Okay. We will see what this does. You know, uh, higher interest rates breaking down. Is the market getting overdone? Dollar. I've been wondering why the dollar was weaker when all I keep hearing from Fed members is higher for longer. And I keep hearing from the European Central Bank, they're going to cut in June. Uh, the uh, UK, Bank of England, debating, does it do one? Bank of Canada, debating. Normally, Strong economy, you gotta keep rates higher, your currency does better. It wasn't doing that, we, we were correcting. I don't know that this means anything. Is this just the short covering and the market's coming out? The flip-flops happening in the euro. So I can't answer that question. I can tell you, you've ended the uptrend for the time being. Everything's pointing that this market can let go, so you gotta be careful right there. Um, and that's what I'm seeing in the market. So remember, to take advantage of the sale, you can come up here. 
You can go to irapsteam.com under education are the courses. Under research is where all the research parts are. Hope you take advantage of it. I'll catch up with you in the morning. Take care.